and let them have dominion the kingdom of god is within people it's the advancement of the people that is advancing because of the faith must be backed by the assignment of this ministry is found from that verse where we you're unto a word encounter as pastor david ogwele ministers god's word to you with simplicity and power god bless you he created them to control the earth to control the circumstances on earth just like god controls the heavenly what is divine healing we had to first of all define three terminologies number one health divine and also healing health simply means a state of being well and free from all sickness in the body or in the mind divine simply means from god or like god why healing simply means becoming or making something healthy again so we can now conclude by saying that divine healing simply means making something healthy again by the power of god the restoration of wholesome health by the power of god now the origin of sickness we have come to understand that satan is the cause of sin and sin opened the door for sickness the moment sin stepped in sickness stepped in it's like an excrement and then um, flies when you deal with the flies without dealing with the excrement is a waste of time so you advise to deal with the excrement and the flies themselves disappear so the moment sin came in sickness came in so satan is called the author of sickness diseases and everything that destroy sin is the cause of sickness so sin is the sin is the cause of sickness the moment it came in sickness also came in so the foundation for healing is now the cross the cross jesus died upon two thousand years ago sin brought in sickness the cross destroyed sin and when the cross destroyed sin sickness also and every repercussion of sin was destroyed so a revelation or an understanding of what jesus did for us two thousand years ago deals with this thing called sin and sickness there are three categories of um, how we can categorize sickness number one we can categorize sickness as a satanic oppression as a satanic bondage and also as a satanic affliction in acts chapter 10 verse 38 the bible says how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that was oppressed of the devil for god was with him this was a scripture a great man of god in the healing ministry alexander Dowie caught he was crying and agonizing over the death of his members at that time he had successfully buried 40 of his members that were victims of the bubonic plague a viral infection that came upon the city now in their time they had this misconception that it was because of the sin of man of men in the town that's why god is now punishing the town with sicknesses so this man was now agonizing before the lord asking all sorts of questions asking and wondering why god will want to punish this town that he has been sent to minister to and above all why should all his members be dying 40 members buried and there were still some sick so there was still more space being created in the church for burial ground because of this bubonic plague so while he was there still crying asking god for mercy somehow he bumped into this scripture i don't know whether it was a wind that blew the page or whether his hands just accidentally touched it but all the same he bumped into this scripture acts chapter 10 verse 38 how god anointed jesus christ of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil it dawned on him that sickness was not from god 
but that sickness was a satanic oppression now if you assume that sickness came from god you will approach god and the sickness in a kind of beggarly manner begging him to please do something about this situation but when you know that sickness came through your enemy whom you have authority over a kind of anger boils within you to exercise such authority over the enemy it's just like something that is very valuable to you and you are there scolding and shouting who did this who did this and while you are there saying who did this you just saw a little finger coming in to take it again and you grab this finger it was that small child in your neighborhood you know with a cane you will deal with him you understand what i'm saying that's how it is with the devil the devil is placed far lower than the believer that was why the bible could say if a thief be caught he shall do what restore sevenfold so it is our duty to catch him and we can only catch him by what a revelation so the moment this revelation dawned on this man that a for f- this number of months i've been busy burying my members thinking it was god not knowing it was the devil out of anger he became so angry with himself for having the devil for having allowed the devil to take 40 of his members and while he was there angry he had a knock on the door and they came again and said sir sir it's jenny poor jenny she's about to die her mother wants you to come in and pray the last sacrament before she goes he said jenny is not he said, before she goes to heaven he said jenny is not going to heaven they said eh? you mean she's going to hell he says it's, no, it's going neither place <laughs> heaven or hell she's staying here and they, they looked at him what happened the man had been ignited amen so he went to the place in anger discharged everybody and rebuked that spirit you know when you are so angry over a situation and it dawned on you that you could solve that problem like this when they give it to you you will turn it with all your heart you will solve it with all your heart rebuke that spirit in the name of jesus christ the girl come forth for some time and got up healed and he went about out of anger telling the whole town and the whole neighborhood that this thing did not come from god it's from the devil they laughed at him but he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed before you knew it he had a church of over ten thousand people in attendance meanwhile tens of i mean some hundreds some thousands of those people were actually victims of this plague that god healed miraculously by his hands sickness is a satanic bondage in luke chapter 13 verses 11 to 16 we saw the, in the bible jesus was saying concerning a guy a woman that was bent up she was so bent i could imagine how she must have seen jesus maybe through her legs under she was so bent over that jesus addressed her situation as a satanic bond that she ought to be loose from this bond all these years she has been afflicted by it so sickness is a satanic bondage and sickness also is a satanic affliction job chapter 2 verse 7 says so went Satan forth from the presence of the lord and smote job with sore boils from the sole of his foot onto his crown so it was job that smote job it was um, the devil that smote job sorry and another word for the word smote is afflicted so sickness is a satanic oppression it is a satanic bondage it is a satanic affliction each time you come across cases the doctors call incurable there is a spirit responsible for that case it's called the spirit of infirmity in the whole bible you are expected to deal with 16 strong men and one of the strong men is the strong man called the spirit of infirmity the moment the spirit of infirmity is bound the man or the victim can be set free of his sicknesses the spirit of infirmity simply means a disease causing spirit the reason it is important to know that Satan is behind sickness is for you to have faith to resist it you should have faith to resist every kind of sickness the legal ground for sickness is sin and god took away that legality when jesus died on the cross 
sin is what has given the devil a legal ground to afflict mankind with infirmities the death of jesus on the cross is what took away that legality it's like walking up to a dog and removing all the teeth of the dog the devil has been rendered toothless he might still be growling and barking but he's a roaring lion but he's not he's not a roaring lion but he, he is as a roaring lion he's a toothless bulldog it has been dealt with and to prove that the moment sin is dealt with sickness has to go you see it in psalm 103 verses 2 to 3 god almighty by david was making a statement he said bless the lord O my soul bless the lord and i said who had forgiven all my transgressions and who healed all my diseases the healing of sicknesses always follows the forgiveness of sins in matthew chapter 9 verses 1 to 7 you will see the man that was brought down from the roof the paralytic when he was dropped on the floor jesus made a statement he said son thy sin be forgiven and the moment he made that statement the pharisees sadducees and uh, all those religious guys now said how dare you this is blasphemy how can you say you are forgiving a man's sin and jesus asked them the question which do you think is easier to forgive sins or to say to the man rise walk and go amen it's easier to say your sins be forgiven you know why if you say it nobody knows whether it actually happened or not amen anybody can say it hallelujah nobody can tell whether it is actually forgiven but to say rise up if it, if it does not rise up we know that your words did not work don't be so so it's easier to say your sin be forgiven but now jesus now also made a statement is after making that statement your sins be forgiven he now turned to him he now said to show you that the son of man has power to forgive sins i say unto the son arise walk and go home and the man got up took his bed and went home jesus proved one thing that the moment sin is dealt with sickness has to bow so the fact that the man got up from that sick bed was a sign that his sin indeed had been forgiven each time if you ever doubt that jesus ever died on the cross to forgive us of our sins each time somebody testifies i've been healed is enough sign to show you that 2000 years ago jesus died to deal with sicknesses or to deal with sin so each time i see a sick person it's an opportunity to tell the whole world that jesus died for our sin it's an opportunity to manifest the love of jesus christ that he died for our sin 2000 years ago and this is the evidence the bible calls us witnesses witnesses does not simply mean people that only go about saying that they were there witnesses are proof producers they prove the resurrection of jesus and one of the ways we prove the resurrection of jesus is by bringing healing to the sick Next. seven ways jesus healed in the bible one way jesus healed he had so many methods but seven were clearly distinguished jesus number one spoke the word of authority he rebuked sicknesses jesus rebuked it because he was aware that somebody was behind it that's why he rebuked it he spoke words of authority he also rebuked sicknesses in Mark chapter 11 verse 23 he said whosoever shall say unto this mountain it can be a problem it can be a sickness be thou removed is an instruction and be thou 
cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he said these were the teachings of jesus christ and he practiced exactly what he taught he rebuked sicknesses he rebuked death commanded death to lose his grip the same way he rebuked sicknesses the spirit of infirmity to lose their grip and there was no argument he spoke words of authority in matthew chapter 5 verses 5 to 13 we saw the story of the centurion who came trusting god for healing of his servants and when he came to jesus and told jesus about his servant's case jesus said i'm going to come and heal you i'm going to come to heal you he says lord i'm not worthy for you to come under my roof but say in a word and my servant shall be healed for i am a man like you are under authority and i say to a servant go and he goes i say to the other come and he comes so also i believe you have authority over sicknesses you have authority over angels if you can say to one to go it will go if you can say to sickness to go it shall go also and jesus was amazed at the dimension of faith expressed because it takes faith to believe that a spoken word will create a miracle the bible says by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of god that the word of god created everything we see today so also you should have faith in your ability to speak life-giving words to seek situations is being given to us as children of god to declare speak over sicknesses and it shall come to pass and jesus made that statement he said your servant is healed the moment he said it a miracle took place and the centurion saw the miracle so we can speak words we can speak words we can speak words and those words shall come to pass just in the school before i came in here in divine healing i made them to understand that every sickness on the believer is illegal and christ has given us legality by the cross to arrest every illegal transaction of the enemy so it is our job to come in and insist that the illegal transaction that the enemy is transacting in anybody's life thereby causing sicknesses is our job to arrest the enemy and bring healing to the person and we said it for some time and i told them that don't ever for one day allow your body to just go down on you you have the authority to speak to it and the moment i perceived in my heart that they had caught that revelation i gave them the command to issue commands over their bodies any part that has been an annoyance to them that's what we call an annoying evil that right now they have the right to speak to it and they spoke and everybody spoke for like two minutes and everybody was happy suddenly it was time for us to take testimonies and you could be shocked at what we heard a girl said that she had been embarrassed by this running nose you know if, if uh, this cancer keeps running for years that people have prayed pastors have prayed and different kinds of things he said pastor it just went like this i'm amazed i said do you know why it went you had an understanding of god's provision for you in healing and you cashed in on it by releasing your faith i keep telling people don't just have faith for things release your faith for things somebody once asked once met me and said pastor i don't know why i have faith for this but it's not working i said that's why it's not working because you have faith for it and the person was shocked what do you mean that i have faith for something and i said god never told you that if you have it 
you will get it he says release it it's just like a man with a thousand naira in his pocket and he walks up to um, the ref there and says i have money but why am i not eating why am i not eating you are not eating because you have not released the money faith is a currency of the supernatural world release it and it will pay for anything you want can i hear a believing amen? amen jesus healed by laying on by laying hands or touching the sick i can give you okay let's take matthew chapter 20 verse 29 to 34 very important we take at least a scripture and as they departed from jericho a great multitude followed him and behold two blind men sitting by the wayside when they heard that jesus passed by cried out saying have mercy on us o lord thou son of david and the multitude rebuked them because they should hold their peace they should hold their peace that's amazing how can a man tell you what you ought to do they should hold their peace blind men don't talk when men that see are operating <laughs> you should hold your peace you should not hold your peace amen bible says but they cried the more saying have mercy on us O lord thou son of david and jesus stood still and called them and said what will ye that i shall do unto you jesus wants you to voice out your miracle he knows what they wanted but it's a principle that you have to voice it out and then they said unto him lord that our eyes may be open the next verse so jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes and immediately their eyes received sight and they followed him so he touched them and when he touched them virtue left him into their being and a miracle took place next jesus healed people through the virtue or power that was accessible in him when they touched him in this case he wasn't the one that touched them they were the ones that touched him the story of the woman with the issue of blood it was an act of faith she said to herself if i can but touch the hem of his garment i shall be whole and her faith you know took her to where jesus was and the moment she touched the hem of his garment virtue flowed out if you read that part of the bible it said something about um jesus told them who touched me and peter was amazed he said see all these people thronging thee and thou sayest who touched me but he didn't know that it was an act of faith and because that woman stepped out in faith she drew virtue out of jesus and when you are carrying the virtue called the healing anointing you know when it's gone you know when someone draws it out because you feel it leave your vessels so people also got healed by touching him and they drew the virtue that was accessible to him the next jesus got people healed through the faith of others the is the story of the issue um the the woman with the issue of blood was a a dimension of faith but faith that was expressed by the touching of jesus the story of the centurion whose servant was healed was also faith expressed through the words of jesus so jesus got people healed through their faith somebody approached our robots years ago you know before he passed on to be with the lord and told him please my child is dying oral robert had finished ministering laying hands on people and he was exhausted and in that exhausted said he started apologizing to the woman he said lady sorry i can't do anything i'm so worn out exhausted please if you can come with this baby tomorrow i'll be refreshed the woman grabbed the man and said i didn't ask you whether you are fresh or not i know if you will only lay your hands on my baby 
whether you say anything or not this baby will come out of this state it was a, a serious condition and Oro said okay not even expecting much he laid hands on the child he said so be it according to your faith and stepped out to enter his vehicle and the woman screamed he looked the baby was normal some infirmities crippled or whatever they will be still running about Oro got shocked and Jesus said to him don't be shocked that's how it also happened people came to me and I saw such faith that even amazed me like the centurion servant eh, like the centurion and immediately they got what they wanted so this thing called faith is dangerous amen Jesus healed through the gifts of healing or what is normally called the healing anointing the healing anointing is a manifestation of the Holy Ghost if you notice in first Corinthians chapter 12 when they were talking about the gifts of the Spirit the gifts of healing and the diverse kinds of tongues were the only two gifts that were mentioned in the plural form the plural form it tells you that they have categories in this gift if they say gifts of healing it simply means that one gift alone in this whole bunch is not enough to heal all the diseases so they have different manifestations of gifts of healing in other words every minister of god carries upon himself every healing minister carries upon himself a unique healing anointing just as we have specialists in the medical world you know to take care of different kinds of infirmities we have the gynecologist we have the pediatrician we have the um, um, surgeon we have the obstetrician we have the oculus we have the dentist and different kinds of people these are people specially trained to address certain diseases so also in the gifts of healing there are gifts that come upon a man's life who the gifts that are skillful in addressing certain sicknesses how do you know the kind of healing anointing you possess if you notice a kind of sickness always healed whenever you speak the word it is an indication of the kind of anointing you have not everybody is specialized in every diseases i believe god allowed these things to happen so that once in a while we can learn to be humble and also codependent doctors in the medical profession there are cases they look at they see that this case is beyond their knowledge and they refer the case to yet another doctor now when a doctor refers a case to somebody else it does not indicate inferiority it simply means somebody else is better in this area than i am obviously i am better in some other areas than he is but once well, it has come to a point where this case before me right now all my knowledge in the medical world cannot solve this man's problem so i know a man who has been proven in this area you make referral to it a girl once asked me i prayed i prayed for this person i prayed i prayed i prayed for people they get healed i prayed for this one this person died i said have you ever prayed for a sickness similar to what this person is suffering from she said not really i said after praying you would have humbled yourself and looked for someone who has an anointing that is equipped to handle these kind of things Kenny Hagen said that in his ministry he has noticed that growths, cancers, and he named the few were always healed each time he is under the anointing. That where he sees other cases healed is when he spends time to teach the word of God. So they got healed by their faith. But whenever his healing anointing comes, without asking much, he says if you have he starts calling those cases he knows his anointing handles 
because the river at that time the pool had been stirred up so he says as many of you that have so and so jumping 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 in one of his, his tapes he said he called as many of them and they jumped in and they got healed all of a sudden the anointing lifted and somebody came he said sorry you won't get it he said why he said because the river has stopped moving but sit down it's either you sit down i will teach you or you can come tomorrow when i'm fresh and the anointing is boiling he said please i'm so sick i want it now so he sat him down and he taught him the word and the man received faith and believed and got healed so as a minister you should know these two sides whenever i'm under the healing anointing there are cases i don't joke with i just call them out they just get it and each time you know because god has called us to be signs and wonders to our generation you know there are times you need to go to a place and become a wonder boy amen hallelujah and what will make you a wonder boy don't look for cases that you have not handled look for the ones you've handled before amen i love this man what's his name tim tim story he comes and he just looks at cancer cases and he starts shooting gun at them and the, the cancer goes before he came up public to do he has done in his private closet and he walked so he came out and he started doing it and people were like yeah wonder boy amen <laughs> no it's good to, to do wonders paul stood before a congregation and perceived that somebody had faith he said sir stand he has done it before he knows that his anointing can deal with such infirmities and he applied that thing immediately and he walked a man went to a crusade and uh, had fasted and prayed and the unction was on him he said where is that where is the blind and he spent the remaining two hours trying to cast out blindness he could not when he lifted up his eyes after two hours he noticed that the congregation half of them had gone home their faith died faith died so he started apologizing to the congregation that no worry, tomorrow it will be more powerful how can it be more powerful when they didn't see power today so the guy started going home out of disappointment and as he was passing by there was a guy by the edge who was deaf as he passed the guy the guy screamed i can hear he would have begun with the deaf if he had begun with the deaf eh, the faith of everybody would build and different kinds of miracles would be happening so test the anointing you have <laughs> test it when you are sure it always works become a wonder boy amen <laughs> hallelujah jesus healed through the gift of working of miracles these are all gifts of the spirit in the working of miracles you know okay sorry in the other one the man in the bedside pool you noticed the man was still complaining he wasn't even stepping out in faith when jesus told him to rise up the healing anointing at times works without the faith of the recipient it is an anointing it is an enablement whether you have faith or not that's why the more we take the gospel to the unreached to the unchurched we experience more manifestations more gifts of the spirit than when we are in the church because at that time at times some of them don't even believe in one of our crusades a muslim came to um, watch us that was in lagos you know some years ago two or three years ago pastor was ministering a muslim woman suffering from hiv just stood out there and was looking at us and she was laughing at us because we were having a program concurrently with them so she came to just see what we were doing and saw pastor preaching and just laughed and all of a sudden pastor started rebuking sicknesses he now rebuked hiv the woman said when she came there she was leaning on the wall because she was so tired while she was there leaning on the wall he she had pastor rebuke that um, condition that she had and suddenly she said strength came into her and she checked her body those pains that she was used to wasn't there again and she came out to testify she was covering her face and begged us not to use camera on her before her husband sees her amen <laughs> hallelujah so it doesn't need at times the faith of the person 
that also goes with working of miracles you know then finally jesus healed through empowering his disciples he gave them power the bible said and he sent them two by two this thing is usually what we call um, transfer of the anointing by convection using a material medium just as you can pass an anointing through a handkerchief you can also pass the anointing through human beings and you send them forth when you lay hands on them an anointing comes upon them and they are empowered to go forth and get the sick healed amen ways of healing the sick we've seen how jesus got them healed now we need to find out how we ought to get the sick healed number one through preaching the word of god when the message of healing is preached by a minister or anyone that has a revelation of healing the sick through faith by the message receives healing from god the dispensation of catherine kuman and benihin made us to think that healings only occur through the healing anointing you will see benihim sing songs like this the touch of jesus heals the brokenhearted from pain and agony he heals you this very hour so he, he sings about the touch of jesus but suddenly a man arose he has been there until lately the world started understanding what he was doing by name tl osborne he said that the word is more powerful than the touch <laughs> tl osborne stood in an in a tulsa oklahoma rema bible camp meeting convention kenny hagen was seated or robots was seated benny hin was seated different kinds of people were seated and they gave tl osborne the microphone to speak and he spoke about his passion for the sick and he spoke about his revelation of the word of god as god's healing instrument and he talked about how the word preached heal the sick tl osborne is not known for laying of hands or robbers is known for laying of hands benny Hinn is not known for laying of hands he's known for worship and bringing down the presence of god tl osborne preaches the word of god and healings begin that's all he does that's all he does he says i believe that the word is stronger than the torch and he stood before those men in the convention i have the tape and he said no man on earth has taken the gospel to the unreached to the unchurched like my wife daisy and i when he made that statement i remembered somebody that has made a statement similar to this and that was apostle paul he said none of these labored as much as i have something hit my spirit and i rolled with it for i don't know how many minutes maybe 10 15 and as i was rolling on my bed listening to what this man was saying tears were just coming down my eyes and I, and as i was rolling say lord what do you want to tell me he said it is designed for one so to so use something in my word and to so walk with it that he can stand before others and said no man has proved this like i have proved it he said paul made it in his time till tell osborne in the midst of healing evangelists is talking about him carrying the gospel to the unchurched that no man has beaten him in that these men are setting records setting records waiting for us to beat those records you're going to beat it in the name of jesus christ somebody had to give himself his life
to make sure that he takes uh, that he took the gospel in his time to the unreached hebrews 4 12 says the word of god is quick powerful sharper than any two-edged sword piercing to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit bone marrow and is a revealer of the intents of the heart of men psalm 107 verse 20, 20 said that he sent his word and healed his uh, their infirmities or their diseases so the word of god has healing once you preach the word with an understanding of what the word you are preaching will do healing breaks out in the lives of people amen next they got people healed through the name of jesus now jesus did not use his name to heal the sick you know why he didn't need it he is the word of god that opposes all things so once he speaks the job is done but he now died for us to now have the name he paid all this price for us to now have his name he gave us his name as authority so that with his name we can do whatsoever jesus ever did so that name is ours is our possession peter made a statement concerning the name he said to the crippled man the lame man at the gate called beautiful he said silver and gold have i known but that which i have say with me i have i have the name of jesus it is my inheritance it's just like saying i have money and i can do whatever i want to do with money that's how it is with the name it must be something you own you possess and now peter understood that he owned it it was his inheritance it was his right so he used that name to do what jesus would have done if jesus were physically present in the situation go back go back i know you're tired though. i'm tired also i've been ministering since morning amen so we're, we're together but let's make, make us understand what we're teaching amen hallelujah i believe you, you didn't just pay to just hear me give you some mumbo jumbo you, you paid for an impartation right yeah we're doing our best amen <laughs> so the name will do for us whatever jesus would have done for us if he were physically present it is what unlocks all the resources of heaven in john 16 23 it was telling us to use his name and things will be unlocked for us next to the healing anointing we've talked about it amen so let's go back to the next one so you can get people healed through the healing anointing one thing about the healing anointing is this the more you pray the more you fast the more it increases and the more it increases the more cases it can handle amen so that you have a particular healing anointing for something does not mean you should not covet the healing anointing for the blind you have the right to covet the Bible says covet earnestly spiritual gifts but as you covet them and pay the price for them as they manifest please experiment know what it can solve and then boldly do it you know publicly and then jesus will receive the praise just keep going keep going by the laying on of hands mark chapter 16 verse 17 to 18 says that we shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover so as we lay our hands on the sick we become an extension of the hands of jesus each time we lay hands on the sick it's as it's as if jesus suddenly took hold of our hands to continue the work he used to do here many years ago amen next anointing with oil the new testament church is instructed to bring healing upon people by the anointing oil you know why oil is symbolic of the holy spirit when we anoint someone with oil we are symbolically calling on the holy spirit to manifest his presence and power to heal the sick the disciples evidently use this method quite 
often in mark chapter 6 verse 13 we read that they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and they were healed oil further is symbolic of healing it contains healing properties it is probably the oldest medicine known to man it has a soothing healing effect the man rescued by the good samaritan had oil and wine poured into his wounds the wine was to cleanse the wounds the oil was to heal them when we anoint with oil we are not applying it as a medicine but as a symbol of healing looking to the holy spirit to impart his healing to the sick one what gets the sick healed is not really the anointing oil if you look at james chapter 5 verses 4 to 16 it tells you what gets the person healed but the oil is used as a point of contact as a symbol the people get healed by their faith there are times you think you have all the healing anointing the person you are praying for does not believe in you nothing will happen nothing i come in i come here to pray for you you said hey on <laughs> i'll say i mean why is my say say no pastor hey pastor come he's looking for you get the person healed it's not, it's not a matter of ego now what you want is the person healed right walk with him by his faith amen there are people that just believe if you can just talk to them on phone they will get healed and you say it it happens there are some you you you, you shout you shout you spit into the phone nothing happens because all they believe is that until you lay hands on them learn at times in the healing business to know what those people observe as points of contact that's why at times you need to interact ask them what has been happening over they've been praying for you what have they been doing why do you even think that all their prayers have not been working let them give you an idea from what they are saying you can tell their misconception you can tell where they are and then you can now know what to do to minister to them and bring them out amen it's called points of contact give me james chapter 5 verses 14 to 16. james 5 14 to 16. oh my god he said is anyone sick among you let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the lord next and the prayer of faith shall save the sick what shall save the sick the oil the oil the prayer of faith shall save the sick so you that is praying with the oil you know that this is a symbol of the holy spirit coming and the person you are praying for once the anoint the anointing oil touched him he also believes that anointing has come to heal him so the prayer of faith faith the man of god prayed in faith this one received in faith because of a point of contact something happened and the man received his healing. the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the lord shall raise him up and if he has committed sins they shall be forgiven amen next 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 way we can heal the sick to the prayer of faith like we just shared with you next healing to the lord's supper the holy communion let me read it for you because we wrote down something very interesting in first corinthians chapter 11 verses 23 to 32 we have a clear indication that participating properly in the holy communion will result in healing and health paul maintains that improper participation has resulted in many of the corinthians being ill and some of them actually dying prematurely for this cause in verse 30 many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep it follows therefore that proper participation will promote good health the lost supper is based on the passover meal after the people of israel ate the passover meal lamb they commenced their journey into freedom 
This nourishing meal was to strengthen their bodies in preparation for the arduous journey. There was not one feeble person among their tribe because they ate the Passover meal. So God kept them in health even while they were in the wilderness. Continue. It is a new covenant. As Jesus shared the bread and wine with them that night, he was making a new covenant with them. The wine symbolized his blood soon to be shed for their salvation. The bread typified the body of the Passover lamb to be eaten for healing and strength. As we eat the Holy Communion, we are expected to understand that the Lord's Supper, one, is to remember Jesus. Jesus said we should do it always in remembrance of him. Two, it is also to celebrate his death. Calvary was not a defeat. It was Christ's greatest triumph for the church. Through his death, he destroyed him that had the power of death. That is the devil. So when we eat of the Holy Communion, partake of it, we should understand that the devil who had the power of death has been destroyed. With this understanding, whatever the devil brings, sickness, poverty, the moment we go to the communion table with this understanding, we now have faith to believe God for healing. Finally, we are expected to understand the, that the Lord's Supper is to discern his body. It is the failure to properly discern the body, his body when celebrating the Lord's Supper, which has resulted in much sickness amongst Christians. Next. So what does it mean to discern the Lord's body? To understand that the bread is his body. So as we eat the bread, it is the Lord's body we are eating. Inherent within it is the life, health, and strength of Jesus. We should eat it in faith, appropriating for ourselves the measure and quality of health which is in Jesus. Have you been impacted by this message? Please share your experience with Pastor David Ogweli. Email address Dominion Image Media at yahoo.com or call 017926879 0803-435-7959 0803-590-9900 0805-315-3823